My name is Dr. Mark Reynolds, and I'm a voice teacher, performance coach, and stage director. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Dimash's performance of Sinful Passion in Sochi. Let's go. Как из лунного сна О, если б знала ты, что мне нужна Только ты одна Но в стуже сердце озарило, как весна, только ты одна. All right, so there's a few things to discuss here. One is he went from a kind of a pop softer, breathier sound to a more operatic sound. What are the things that make that difference? One of the things that makes that difference is the presence of vibrato and how wide that vibrato is. Now, if we're going from pop all the way to opera, really the optimal sound is this nice, shimmery, fast vibrato. We hear it in pop music, we hear it in opera. When we think of opera, we think of a little wider vibrato, a little more pronounced, and more consistency in how often we're hearing it. In pop, we often get straight tone, which is the sound without the vibrato. Here, when he's softer, we hear less of that vibrato, and then all of a sudden, he goes to the more classical sound, we get a little wider vibrato that's more consistent. That's one element that makes it sound more classical or operatic in nature. The second thing that makes it more operatic nature is the tone quality. He's dropping his jaw, he's lifting the soft palate more, he's making the vowels taller in back, so it creates this warmer, richer sound. When we're singing with the classical sound, we're really emphasizing the first two formants and then the singer's formant up top. We're talking about overtone series and that's what makes its unique sound and make it sound operatic. And essentially, the majority of the volume is coming at the very bottom part of that overtone series for the classical voice and up in that singer's formant. When we're singing pop, it's more consistent across all the different formants. So if you look at a spectrograph and you're looking up, you're going to see that each form is more equally layered in terms of its volume. How we shape that space in, in the back of our mouth determines that overtone's frequency shape. If the bass vowel behind our molars is a, ah, say hat, it's going to create that more pop-like, even overtone series, which fits better with a live band or the instrumental setup we usually hear with pop. That classical overtone series is better suited for singing with an orchestra, singing with no mic. And what that allows us to do is uh, it gives us richness in the lower part, which makes it really warm and expressive. And we get a really rich section in that singer's foreman. That's important because if you're singing without a mic and over an orchestra, for the audience to hear it, they need that sound to be rich in the singer's foreman. Our ears are tuned to that, that's where babies cry and it's really exciting to our ear and we really pick it up. So that's one of the reasons why it sounds so different back and forth. He's also starting with a breathier sound. And what that means, his vocal folds aren't coming together all the way at this start. He's starting with an aspirate onset, meaning the air is starting, then the vocal folds are coming together to vibrate, which gives us this breathy sound. All of a sudden, when he starts singing a more classical sound, he's singing with a more balanced onset. Is a balanced onset unique to opera? Definitely not. We can hear it in pop, musical theater, opera, 
wherever we want to hear it, we can hear that bounce onset. These are also some of the elements that help us identify the contrast in the sounds that he's making. When he gets to a new section and uses that new sound, it's really engaging because when he switches that sound, it's with the music. It's not just a habit choice or he gets to this or he gets to this certain note and has to switch over to be able to sing it that way. He's choosing to emphasize the meaning with the color he's choosing. What's really exciting to me here is he's breaking down all the barriers between pop, rock, music theater, opera, and really mixing it all into one big jumble here and using each piece expressively within the musical structure. How cool is that? Dusty. Okay, here's another sound he's giving us. One of the difference here, and he also used a little bit at the beginning when we hear that breathy sound that we talked about, is he's also taking the placement further back. So it's softer. It doesn't have the rich, pingy frontal core. So it doesn't have that rich, resonant, forward sound that is really exciting to our ear. It's softer and it creates a unique sound on its own. And it also is gonna set up a contrast later on, I'm guessing. I've never watched this video. I'm watching it thanks to my awesome listeners who suggested that I react to it. So this is a legitimate first time watching reaction. If I'm watching and his artistry is consistent and what I expect it to be, all of a sudden we're gonna hear this core come back in a really strong, poignant way. Let's see if that actually happens. Okay, we're back at this upper register, but it sounds different than before. Why? Well, he's not doing the aspirate onset anymore, and he's keeping that placement forward instead of back. So it's really crystal clear, forward, and resonant. The other thing we need to talk about is why am I making such a big deal about contrast? Well, contrast gives us meaning. Without contrast, it starts to mean nothing, it becomes a wash. Think of just a blank white wall. Okay, it has meaning, it's a wall, it's a white. But as soon as we put a black dot on it, or a red dot, that gives us some kind of contrast, then our mind can start associate meeting, putting stories with it. It just gives us so much more information and context that we get to go off of here. What's so exciting about watching Dimash is that he's got so many different levels of contrast going on here. He's got contrast going on in where he's placing his voice, the onset of his sound, dynamics, styles, meaning we're going from a classical paradigm to a pop paradigm to sometimes an almost R&B type of sound and all these other contrasts going on visually as well that we're seeing. We're not seeing a whole lot of change here on stage. He's in a tuxedo. The lights are staying blue and white and focused on him. So the real contrast that we're looking for here visually is what's going on in his face. So you'll know what's going on here is they have these big screens that are zoomed in on his face. That's a really clear cue that the performers, producers, and who are working here are wanting you to take meaning from his face primarily. If all of a sudden we shift to other focal points. <sighs> repeated same things were totally different in how he produced them. One was operatic, one was pop. Awesome. They're both really exciting. They're both forward in placement, 
but his shape in the back was different. His mouth shape, his jaw dropping, different. Gives us different sounds. He's shifting back and forth between these so quickly, so fluidly, that it helps it feel like one unified style, which to me is what is so impressive and kind of mind blowing. So cool. <laughs> Okay, what's this sound and what's going on? All of a sudden we get this really high voice. Well, this is actually the same kind of voice in register if you want to talk registers, which I usually don't like to, that Sam Smith sings, that Sam Smith uses. The difference here, the placement is a little further back, the shape in back is a little taller, and we have consistent vibrato. If instead he got rid of the vibrato, put the placement forward, it all of a sudden sound like the sound we get with Sam Smith. Is it impressive? Yes. Does this mean you can't do this? No. If you want to try it, try to sing like you're in a female register. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And start playing with the back shape. Is it an ah, ah, oh, uh? And the placement in front. Is it really forward and buzzy? Does it feel like the sound's going straight up or even further back? If you're really interested in this, go ahead and check out on YouTube some counter tenors. Where he's singing right now is in the counter tenor range, and he's exploring that and utilizing that in the same way he's using the rest of his range. He's going through different genre styles, different placements, different mouth shapes, but again, doing it so fluidly that it's super impressive. Okay, I lie. Can anyone hit that high note that he just hit? No. There's not a prayer in the universe that even if I practice is forever trying to get that, that I would reach it. I don't have the genes. My instrument isn't built to sing that note. If you watch the video that Sam Johnson and I did together on this, yes, he has a point. There is something here in just his genes. His instrument has that higher extension. Wow. visual contrast we were looking for. They saved it for this huge moment. Awesome. No doubt. If I was there, I'd be standing on my feet, screaming my lungs out. That is awesome. Other quick thing that I want to point out here that I think is really important. If you're just watching his whole body, it would look like he is working so hard to sing. Don't be fooled. The place to watch to see if they're singing healthily or not is from right below their nose, along here back, all the way back, behind their jaw, down their neck, up here, 
and around through the shoulders, right? He's not working very hard there at all. We're not seeing any grab, any strain, any push, any force. He's doing all his hard work and his expressiveness with his face, his arms, his legs. And so it's super engaging, feels super emotional without him putting any extra attention here. To me, of all the things that I'm seeing, that is the most impressive and fantastic to see. To my viewers who recommended this, and there's quite a few, thank you. This is amazing. I will definitely have to do some more of these, if nothing else, because it's so fun to watch. Next time, we'll talk more about what he's doing physically and the performance side of what he's got going on. But there's so much to talk about with just the vocal side and what he's doing that this is really fun to do. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you want a voice lesson, a performance coaching, or just want someone to talk through your ideas, contact me at mrperformingartsstudio.com and book a lesson. Let's work together online.